Last year, I made a video showing you guys how to collimate a Newtonian telescope using a simple laser collimator. Today, I want to pick up on that idea and show you a more complete and accurate way to collimate a Newtonian telescope using not only a high precision laser, but also two other different collimators. So hit that like button and subscribe and let's take a look together at the super collimation kit from Farpoint and see how it can be used to obtain near perfect collimation results. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to BD Observatory. This collimation kit was kindly sent to me by Optical Structures as a review unit and I want to thank them for this. For you guys it's important to know that my opinions about this product won't be affected by this and are entirely my own. Optical Structures Incorporated or OSI is a high-tech manufacturing company that specializes in electro-optical magnetical engineering and manufacturing based in California, USA. There are different brands under the OSI umbrella, such as Farpoint, Lumicon, GMI, Astrodon and Optic Wave Laboratories, all producing different kinds of equipment for both professional and amateur astronomers. Today, I have the super collimation kit from Farpoint with me. It consists of three different types of collimators, all designed to help obtain a very accurate collimation of the optical system. Collimation is the process by which the different optical elements of an optical system are aligned in order for it to be able to produce images that are as sharp and aberration free as possible. All telescope types need collimation at some point, and this is typically done at least once in controlled environments directly at the factory. For refractors, this initial collimation is usually enough since they are able to hold the collimation indefinitely. That is, if you are somewhat careful in handling the telescope and not subject it to shocks. With reflectors, it's another story. By default, these telescopes aren't as sturdy as refractors. Small shocks and vibrations caused by simply transporting the telescope to your observing destination are enough to cause the mirrors to misalign. This is why collimating a Newtonian telescope at least once in a while is essential in order to have a perfect image quality. The collimation kit I have here helps achieve this by using three different items. First, there is a laser collimator with a one and a quarter inch and two inch combo stepped barrel that's machined from a single piece of aluminum. On one hand, this makes it a bit heavy, but on the other hand, this also results in a very solid and robust piece of equipment. Compared to a typical laser collimator, this one really feels like a premium equipment piece. It features an on-off button on one end and a small opening on the other end where the laser beam comes out. In this case, the laser has a 650 nanometer wavelength, which gives it a red appearance. The aperture through which the beam comes out has a diameter of only 0.76 millimeters, allowing for a very tight and focused laser beam resulting in less speckling and a more precise reading of the laser beam's position on the primary mirror when compared to other normal laser collimators. Here is what the difference between the Farpoint and a regular laser collimator purchased on Amazon looks like in terms of width and focus of the laser beam. You can see that the laser beam of the Farpoint collimator is much more focused and smaller in diameter. With a regular laser collimator, the higher the intensity of the laser is set to be, the brighter and wider the laser beam becomes, making it more difficult to read its position on the mirror. So having a very focused beam is definitely a win for the Farpoint collimator. 
where a regular laser collimator only has three screws to hold the laser diode in place, the Farpoint laser collimator uses eight opposing screws to keep both ends of the laser diode fixed. This means that this collimator should stay aligned forever and also be much more resistant to shocks. The one thing that I found to be missing entirely was the possibility for adjusting the laser beam's intensity, like you would find on a regular laser collimator. If you are using it during the day, then it's perfectly fine. But if you are trying to collimate your telescope when the light already started to fade away, then the laser dot on the primary mirror can become too bright, making it hard to see the center spot. This will make collim the collimation process a bit more difficult. In terms of power, the laser collimator uses a CR123 3 volt battery to power the laser. Changing the battery is done by simply unscrewing the top cap with the on-off switch. Next, there is a 2 inch Cheshire collimator that, just like the laser collimator, is precisely milled from a single piece of aluminum, giving it the same premium look and feel. This equipment piece doesn't require any batteries to work. You simply insert it into the focuser of the telescope and look through the centered peephole, checking the alignment of the mirrors. How exactly this is done, I'll show you in a minute. The last item in this kit is the 2-inch autocollimator. Now, I don't know if this is a design patented by Farpoint, but I haven't seen this type of collimator until now. It looks like a Cheshire collimator, but with one major difference. The inside surface of the top cap has a mirror finish that allows you to visually inspect the alignment of the two mirrors of a Newtonian telescope. This is the last iteration of this model from Farpoint and promises to offer absolute precision when finishing up the collimation process of the telescope. Like the other two items before, this one too is completely made out of aluminum and has the same quality feel to it. The Farpoint Super Collimation Kit also includes a spotting template and triangle center markers to help simplify the process of center spotting a primary mirror. And all this gets delivered in a nice and well padded transportation case. All right, so this was the collimation kit. Now let's see how these items work together in aligning the mirrors of a Newtonian telescope. In this case, the telescope is my 12 inch ProDub from Omegon. So the first step is to check if the secondary mirror is aligned to the focuser. For this, we use the laser collimator and insert it into the telescope focuser. But before that, if your telescope supports two inch eyepieces, then remove the one and a quarter inch eyepiece adapter from the focuser and use the two inch portion of the collimator for the collimation process. Now we can insert the collimator and make sure that it sits tight and is centered inside the focuser. Also, you want to tilt your telescope to roughly 45 degrees for more accurate results. Now using the three screws for adjusting the secondary mirror, try to bring the laser beam onto the center spot of the primary mirror, like this. Step two is to check and adjust the tilt of the primary mirror. For this, I'm first going to check where the laser beam lands on the collimator's tip after bouncing back of the primary mirror and the secondary mirror. If it isn't exactly centered on the small aperture hole where the laser beam comes out, then you need to adjust the tilt of the primary mirror. This is done by first loosening the locking screws for the primary mirror located on the other end of the optical tube. Then continue by adjusting the tilt of the primary mirror using the collimation screws until the laser beam covers the exit hole of the collimator perfectly. If it looks like this, then you have obtained a fairly good collimation already. 
The collimation process up until here can be done in the field even if it's almost dark outside. As long as you, as you can see the center marking of the primary mirror, then you can collimate the optical system this way. If there is enough light outside, then you can try to adjust the mirrors even more accurately by using the Cheshire collimator. For this, remove the laser collimator and insert the Cheshire piece into the focuser and then tighten it to secure it in place. Keep the telescope elevated at 45 degrees. Now look through the peephole of the Cheshire and check if the center spot of the primary mirror is exactly in the center of the reflective ring of the Cheshire. Now, in my case, it is a bit hard to show on video because the center marking on my primary mirror isn't that bright and on video it appears to be dark gray, making it hard to distinguish against the reflective ring of the Cheshire. Either way, you need to keep adjusting the primary mirror until the center marking of the mirror is centered inside the reflective ring of the Cheshire. At this point, the telescope should be well collimated. But if you want to go one step further to obtain a perfect result, then you can also use the third item in this collimation set, the auto collimator. This would be step three. It's used for checking if there are any small deviations left in the alignment of the mirrors. For this, remove the Cheshire and insert the auto collimator into the focuser and then tighten and center it. The telescope should still be tilted at roughly 45 degrees. Now we look through the peephole of the auto collimator and check if there is any misalignment between focuser, secondary mirror and primary mirror. You can judge this by observing if the reflections of the center marking of the primary mirror overlaps perfectly. After completing all these tasks, and if everything checks out, then the telescope should be perfectly collimated. Don't forget to tighten the locking screws for the primary mirror once you are finished. The problem with simple laser collimators like the one I had before is that you can never be sure of how precise it is of how well it was adjusted before leaving the factory and how lasting the alignment of the laser diode is. If you just started using your telescope, then none of this is really relevant to you. The most important thing is to just collimate your telescope using whatever device and method you like to use. However, if you are more experienced, then the need for precise collimation starts to become an important step in preparing for your observing sessions. This is when a high quality collimation kit begins to make sense. Coming in at 230 euros or 260 US dollars, the super collimation kit from Farpoint is certainly a bit expensive, but if you're looking for a premium collimator that will let you align the optical system of your telescope in a very precise way, then you should definitely give this collimation set a try. There is also a set that contains only the laser collimator and the Cheshire piece, which will also save you about 80 bucks or so. I will leave a link to both of them in the video description below. These are affiliate links, meaning that if you use them to make your purchase, it won't cost you more, but by doing so, you are supporting this channel. So please keep this in mind. So this was my opinion about the Farpoint Super Collimation Kit. And now I'm curious to find out what you guys think about it and what items do you use to collimate your telescopes in general. Let me know in the comments below. All right, that's been it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have questions or feedback, then please leave a comment and I will get back to you. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next video.